Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video, and I'm going to revisit in this video my XJ Coupe V12 manual. You've been following in huge numbers the rebuild of this car, and back in February, we did the first trip post rebuild up into Wales. It was a bit wet, and I couldn't actually push it, I couldn't go over 3000 RPM. And a lot of comments have come back on the comment. You obviously really like this car, and in this video, I want to share with you its star quality. The sound this car makes, as I can now use all the revs on it, is I think astonishing. It could potentially be the best sounding car in this garage. Testarossa is fighting for that position, Kuntash as well, Project 8 with its growl, but the, the creamy howl this V12 makes that's what I'm going to sort of concentrate on this video and just go answer some of the questions you've uh, posed in the comments of why I haven't done various things or why I would change that. So let's go and just have a, a closer look and I'll just go through some of those details now. One of the things that was asked was well, surely moving the number plate there underneath is going to affect the cooling of this car. I'd like to point a few things out here. One, previously there were sort of driving lights here that we've taken out. Two, the radiator on this car is way better than it came with as standard. And three, the number plate is actually, there's air behind it. And if you look at the oil cooler here, it actually drops down here. It feeds quite a lot from here as well as there. So putting the number plate there makes no difference to the cooling on this car. In fact, since I've had it, it absolutely stays bang on normal and occasionally the fans have got in. The cooling capacity of this car is transformed over what it was new and moving the number plate has made no difference whatsoever. Another question that's raised, why didn't I put bigger wheels and tyres on it? Well, I like these Kent alloys. These were the performance wheel in its day. Optional extra, they came on the XJS and they were an option on the XJ Coupe. And I also like running the older tyre, XWX tyre, narrow, I should know its size, I think it's 205, is it? Yeah, 205, 70, 15. I want a narrow tyre, because in actual fact, the structural rigidity of an XJ Coupe isn't very good. The rear suspension, it's a strange thing, they actually use the drive sh shaft coming out of the diff as a sort of wishbone it holds the wheel in position and putting major sideways force in here if you over tire an xj one the rear suspension sort of collapses it was a problem they had with the broad speed racers they had a dramatic sort of in uh, reinforcement to try and hold the rear together and if you over tire it you get sort of cracking here because the apron is so slim and the torsion rigidity is not great so i do not want to overload the chassis so i want to put period rubber on it and keep it narrow which is also the reason i didn't do a steed conversion the steed car in reality was a bit rubbish it still had the automatic gearbox and it had completely untouched mechanicals had this massive presence with these huge wheels and tires but all the you know drivers stunt drivers hated it because it had just couldn't make it do anything it wouldn't even wheel spin off the line they had to quietly put water down anywhere they wanted to do a smoky getaway otherwise you just no chance of spinning the wheels on it so and i think the elegance of this car is just perfect and i also like the color it's in etc so that is the reason it's not a steed conversion another final point engine why didn't you increase the cc of the engine and all the rest of it well i quite like the performance as it is i'm just going to pop the bonnet and i also love that this car has a period tuning 
on it that I didn't do. And that's on these intakes. I've explained this before, but I'll do it again. These are by a company called AJ6 Engineering in period. This is not standard XJ Coupe, this injection, um, well, the inlet manifold here. This has a 32% bigger airflow meter in there. And it has this different air box, which has two trumpets here rather than one. A normal coupe to breathe through just one of those, slightly smaller than that. And this one has much greater airflow going into the engine. And then I put the tubular manifold on it and it just breathes better and being basically blueprinted built by Tom Lenthal Jaguar. This is an ace engine. And I can't tell you now it's run in. It's an absolute monster power plant and suits this car beautifully. So that's why I didn't go any further with the engine. This is, this is, if I want a quicker car, I'll buy a quicker car. This, I just wanted enhanced to look very elegant and have a sort of surprise factor. One, from the performance and two, just the sound. With the manual gearbox and that engine, I couldn't wish for any more. So what I'm gonna do now, take it outside and show you just what this car sounds like. Now, quite a few of you have commented on the choice of steering wheel on this car. I really like this wheel. I'm not interested in the wood wheel. I like this one, but this is a period Momo wheel. And it was also the one that Lister used in period. I drove an XJ Coupe and it had this wheel as well. So that's why I have this wheel, not a wood wheel or anything like that. Now, this is my little squirt out of Burford. So this is gonna be your first taste of the sound of this car. I'm going to hold back, it's good, there's no traffic about. I think I'll probably, I'll probably take second. There we are. And it's just the reach of this engine I hope you get to experience. So here we are, about two and a half thousand RPM. Not your normal XJ Coupe sound at all. It's just the way it howls. I mean, only doing that, uh, that went just over 6,000 RPM that time. Not really, it sounds like 7,000. It sounds like you're on the grid of Silverstone, whoa. And you have to remember the V12 Jaguar V12 engine is a short stroke engine. It thrives on revs. I've done nothing other to the engine apart from the induction and exhaust. There's no special cam in it, standard capacity, but the character is transformed by this manual gearbox and the rebuild. I don't really know what horsepower it is. I'm gonna guess at 300 plus, let's say 320, 325. But it's big torque, it's 5.3 litre for goodness sake. So there's plenty of grunt at two and a half, but from four to six, oh, the howl is very addictive. done all the handling on this car it had that handling kit I can't believe it's nearly five years ago but gas adjustable dampers eye back springs significantly lowered all rebushed uh, much stiffer bushes especially on the steering rack and that sort of thing so let's just try it down here again the blips perfect pedal placement for heel and towing who would have thought that those spring rates this is a rubbish bit of tarmac you would not know it just shows you how much you could stiffen up a Jaguar from the 70s and the ride isn't really affected how soft they were and how much suspension they travel up this is rise lower one thing of note nothing to the roll bars the anti-roll bars stay absolutely as standard but down here exemplary you would never guess this had a extra spring rate and it's helped also by keeping those period tires so keeping those taller aspect tires but fantastic down here 
absolutely non-issue and a bit more feel from the steering it's not super sharp like you expect from a modern car with their ultra low profile tires nothing like that but um, compared to its standard uh, configuration it's just completely different understand why I drive this car always with the windows open there's no air conditioning on this car it was an option when it was new and the original owner didn't tick the box but weirdly there's very little draft when you've got the full both windows open at the side and you get to hear that V12C so this is how I drive the car so there's a little bit of wind interference on the microphone and I apologize but I hope you understand I just wanted to give you the full effect of that V12 singing its heart out. Right, let's try it through this compression. Just touches that exhaust. I've got to have that raised. It's a manifold around here. No, Jack Coupes don't have them like this. a chance of doing that in a regular coupe and this thing with that suspension setup no problem I've actually turned the damper slightly up from their initial settings and I think it's just in the sweet spot now the other thing is just how quickly it revs I'll just slow down again brain doesn't compute from the car you're sitting in and what you expect it to drive like and when you're sort of beamed into the seat here nothing all those sort of pre-assumptions blown out the window yellow stuff uh, pads on it, uh, new discs all around, chuck it into here, more grip than expect, there we are, quickly grab second, and we go. <laughs> You'd swear blind it was doing like 8,000 RPM, but no. Anyway, that gives you a little taste of the fully rebuilt Jaguar XJ Coupe. The transformations came in three forms, I think. Gearbox first, the fact it's a manual gearbox makes it completely different to the three speeds auto slush box of it had in period. Second, the handling kit, you can see it's just transformed, it's nothing like a regular XJ at all. Third, I suppose actually the body and the fact it's structurally stiff and what um, painting plastic cars did to the car there, I now have a structurally sound, as new in effect, body shell and all sealed, all waxed. I think the icing on the cake is this engine and that rebuild to blueprint standards and just the way it howls and just is not a V12 Jagger as you expect. And just to... <laughs> Listen to that. Yeah. So as you can tell, I'm really enjoying this car. I love it being in the garage. Big family favourite. Yes, the restoration costs a lot. 60, 70 thousand pounds all in, including the car. But I think it's so worth it. I think the tweaks, I just want to try a tweak on exhaust. going to put a cross pipe in it. But overall, I am so happy with this car. Speedo needs recalibration as well because of the different diff. 
but minor little tweaks. I'll change the radio, I'm going to update the radio. But there you go, hope that gives you a taste of this revised XJ Coupe. And you now hear it in its full sound, full voice. And I can use all the revs now since I've run it in. If you have enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.